Why is there always someone who brings eggs and tomatoes to a speech? Here's your look at the new NECA toys. Batman Returns, Mayor Penguin, one quarter scale action figure. Who or what is the Penguin, a reclusive and strangely deformed creature with a brilliant mind honed by rage and an insatiable need for revenge? The Penguin forms an unlikely alliance with an immoral business mogul, Shrek, that sends Gotham City and its residents to its knees in terror. Flanked by an army of loyal penguins prepared to do his most evil bidding and a treacherous band of vandals known as the Red Triangle Circus Gang, the Penguin carries the secrets of his origins with him as he embarks on a diabolical plan to to destroy Gotham City and its savior, Batman. Ah, the direct approach. I admire that in A Man with a Mask. Before we get a closer look at Mayoral Penguin, the one-quarter scale release, the first thing, of course, we're going to want to do is figure out how tall does it actually stand. Like I said, it's going to be pretty big. While I'm getting that all in order, I'd like to thank as well the folks over at NECA Toys that provide the sample of Mayoral Penguin that we could have a look at in this review. As I said, we're going to take the tape measure right to the very top of what I believe to be his head, and we're going to stop it right there. Mayoral Penguin stands 14.9. Told you he was pretty big. He's 15, almost 15 inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that the figure of Penguin is 37.8 centimeters tall. We'll look at some of the accessories first, then we'll have a look at the figure's head sculpt, and then we'll go back and look at the rest of the accessories because some of them will actually attach to his face and around the head area. As this one doesn't fall into that category, we'll look at this thing first. It's the included fish, the mowed away fish that Shrek offers him inside the office. Now that looks to be like it's a salmon. I'm not going to be starting to guess which type of fish this could be, but it kind of looks like it's got the flesh coloring of a salmon. You can see there's still the bones on the inside of it, the remaining carcass of it at least. If that's the way, I guess Penguin likes to eat his fish. It does have some really nice detailing to it. It's kind of strange. It might be the only time, I think, in any time that we've reviewed things on this channel that we've looked at the carcass of a dead fish. But you can see there's the head sculpt there. I would only hope that Penguin at least eats the freshest of fish. Apparently, if you can't smell fish, then it's still fresh. The moment it starts developing a fish odor, it's good a telltale sign to know that that's not the fish that you should be eating. You also should be looking at its eyes. Is this becoming a tutorial about fish? Apparently, if it's got glossy, glazed over eyes, smoky colored eyes, then those are also fish that you may want to avoid. That being said... Some nice paint work done to what's left, at least, of the fish. You can see not only is there silver, but there also seems to be almost a shimmering effect of green that's been painted onto the surface as well. Penguin also comes included with a hand. I guess you could technically say that this is the hand for holding the fish, but it could also serve other purposes as well. You can take sort of the remains of the fish and just take the opened area of it and wedge it in between the fingers and the thumb, kind of giving you this look right here. <laughs> the very idea that we're looking at the carcass of a fish is rather impressive, the fact that NECA would even include this with this release of Penguin. Taking a break, though, from the rest of the accessories, I first wanted to look at Penguin's face because there are things then that we want to add on top of it. I certainly didn't want to take anything away and steal the spotlight from the head sculpt that they've done here. That is an incredible likeness, not only of Penguin of how he appears in Batman Returns, but of also actor Danny DeVito. A perfect fit for Penguin, if you like this look of Penguin, that is. You can see that fitting the profile he does in the movie, very long, exaggerated nose. A lot of additional prosthetics were added to Danny DeVito, and yet his acting skills as the Penguin still managed to shine through rather nicely. I like the grimy-looking discoloration of his teeth. Those are rather disgusting. And also the additional color that they've added to the face is really good too. Not only do you have more of a base cream color, which then still manages to show all the wrinkles showing through here on the sides of his face, and especially the areas around his eyes, boy, those look really nice. But also they've added on top of it this almost grape-colored purple, washing it just around the areas of the lip and just the areas around the eyes as well. I don't believe they could have gotten a better looking likeness down pat here for Penguin. 
Now, this is technically a second released penguin. The first penguin I had believed more had the sewer look to him. This is, of course, if you want to have your penguin looking more like the mayor of Gotham City. Some other details I certainly want to show you guys. Oh, just that's a incredible looking head sculpt. I do also think they did a pretty good job of transitioning the molding of the hair on the back of his head then to the real hair that comes actually out from the bottom of it. I mean, yes, if you're spinning it around, honestly, you could still see the line where the line has, the hair has been attached in there. But I think it's still pretty good the way that they've done this. And even the idea that they've used, I'm assuming not a real hair, but closest thing at least to that. The hair almost has a bit of a crumbliness to it, that they probably applied some product to it just so it got a little bit more weight to it, so it's just not going to be all frilly and messy. Again, I, I don't think there's anything I really I would have changed at all to the head sculpt. Penguin, though, is looking quite fantastic. Gruesome! Gruesome, yes. We certainly have to put in gruesome. But he is definitely a nice-looking figure head sculpt. Continuing on with a couple of Penguin's accessories, these are things, of course, you can attach to his face, starting first with his monocle. Now, the monocle has been painted with an outline in black. The interior, though, the actual glass part, is a little on the cloudy side, so it's a little harder to see his eye straight through it. But it attaches in a rather clever-looking way. If we spin it around, and very carefully not to then drop it, you can see that there's a post part sticking out. This is the part that's going to be facing inward to his face. You're probably asking yourself, then, where is that supposed to go? If you look really close, and as close as I can possibly get it, in the corner of Penguin's eyes, there is a hole. I know what you're thinking. I don't see a hole. I didn't see a hole either, but trust me when I say this, there is a hole in the corner of Penguin's eyes, or at least this side here. You're going to take the monocle, and first of all, you want to make sure you get the string out of the way because you don't want to get that kind of interrupting you trying to get that in there. But you're going to go ahead and take the post, and you very carefully guide that into the opening of his eye. Basically, follow where the end of his eye is. It's right there. You can just take that post and just try not to apply a lot of pressure, but just enough to get it lodged in there. Because really, the last thing you want to, want to have happen is for that post to break right off. Let's just move the string out of the way very carefully. There we go. And you can see how the monocle sits in there. It's rather clever the way that they've done it. Short of me actually just going in there and just, just adjusting it just a little bit. There we go. You've got the monocle now instantly attached to his face. Really, really interesting the way they've done that. The other thing that we can also look at too, and this was something I had a panic attack actually prior to shooting this part of the review. I thought for a second I had lost this. He comes with, with of course, his cigarette. The cigarette fell out of his mouth and onto the floor, and I spent about five, ten minutes actually trying to track it down. And I'm so glad that I did because this is the thing I definitely would want to have displayed with the figure. It's got some varying colors, black, silver, and then, of course, the end of it with the actual cigarette. And this fits into his mouth in a concealed place the same way as his eyes. In the corners of his mouth, there's a separation, there's a gap between where his teeth stop and the end of his lip. If you go right next to his teeth, and I'm going to kind of use this as a pointing tool, right around here, right where I'm pointing here, there's an actual gap in his teeth. Well, there's a gap between his teeth and his lip. And then from there, it may even help actually to take a light source and just feed a light in there just so you can see where you're going. There's just a small enough hole that you can take then the cigarette and feed that into the corner of his mouth. That can actually go on both sides. I think at the beginning of this review, I started with the cigarette being on this side of his face, but I think I probably would want to have it on the opposite side of the monocle now that I think about it. One other accessory you can certainly tackle as well from being a mayor is a top hat. He does include, of course, the top hat that he wears in the movie. I mean, just the top hat alone has a nice texturing and, done, and paintwork done to it as well. Even the band down at the bottom with the bow, that's a lot of bees, also has been painted in a different shade, a different sheen of black than the rest of the hat. Now, I will say the only thing I'm a little bit worrisome of when it comes to this hat, the few times that I've already put this onto his head, and I've tried my best not to apply a lot of pressure, but you'll see it sits right against his forehead. When I did take this off, I noticed that there was a line there. Now, I can't tell whether that line was already there when I first took the figure out of the packaging, but I do believe that some of the marks right along the top here may have resulted from the fact that the coloring of the interior of the hat may have found onto the forehead of Penguin. Again, I would probably recommend not putting a lot of pressure down on it and maybe not putting on the hat so frequently because especially the light coloring of his skin like this, you really don't, I wouldn't want at least, to have lines starting to develop where the paint maybe have came off the hats onto poor Penguin's head instead. 
For the figure's outfit, he has the regular white shirt underneath it. I'm not really sure necessarily where he's getting his wardrobe from, but as you can see, there is a lot of grime and dirt settled onto the surface of the plastic. I really like the fact they've added that. Then, of course, on top of that, Penguin does have this off-copper colored vest. The vest isn't removable. In fact, it's also molded then to the rest of his body piece. In fact, the only thing that seems separate is the little bow piece, the little bow tie part that he has over top of it. Now, it only is removable, to, or at least separatable from this point right here. It seems like it's actually glued to the side of his collar, so you wouldn't be able to remove it in its entirety. But even though the fact that it is liftable, you can also see that NECA still sculpted underneath it and painted rather nicely the rest of the finishing buttons. Even though that's technically something that you wouldn't even see because this would be in the way of things. Shifts a little bit, but certainly I don't think it's something that you can take off completely. Now, something as well, when we're looking at the figure, he does have the flipper gloves. Instead of having the regular human hands or the closest thing to it, he has gloves that he's going to be wearing. Technically, you could then take one of the hands, remove it, and then replace it with the hand that we looked at before. Remember, again, with a mod, nap mount away fish, you can also then pop this hand off and replace it with this hand. I might just do that near the end of this review. Stay tuned for that. One little bit of touch that I do appreciate as well that NECA did is incorporate real fabric. While he doesn't have it up at the top here, this is all just molded plastic. And still, for the fact that it is molded plastic, does have a real look and almost feel to it, even though it's going to feel more like plastic, but at least it looks like a wrinkled shirt. Here, though, you've got the natural draping of what real material then affords you. And, of course, you've got the pinstriping of the pants that fall all the way down to his boots, which you can then lift up and you can see there's some additional articulation. And in fact, you can even lift the pants up even further. You can see the sculpting of what his body would look like underneath the suit, of course, that he wears. He does have some articulation in the boots. We'll talk more about that in a second. And just again, you're curious as well. Penguin does also have peggles on the undersides of his feet. This is possibly going to be the way I'm going to display the figure, but he does also have an alternate way of displaying him. Let's have a look at the trench coat that also comes included with the figure. So this is Penguin's jacket. He has the overcoat that he wears in the movie, but then inside he actually has the jacket from his suit. What they've done instead of actually having two separate pieces is while the inside may look like the suit coat, they've actually sewn just along here a seam where they've attached the two coats together. So you're really not getting two separate coats. Instead, you're getting kind of the main outer coat and then just the slight tease of the jacket that he wears inside. Kind of neat the way they've done that. Along the top of the coat is a faux fur material, and they've gone to the finishing touches of adding sewn on buttons. And even though these aren't functioning pockets, at least they did put flaps in there to kind of give you the look like he does have pockets. Putting this on the figure is actually not that difficult. Let's just move the jacket out of the way. You don't even have to really take the hands off. Sometimes you do have to take hands off figures when it comes to them sliding into sleeves. You really don't have to do that at all with Penguin. Maybe it's just the shape of his hands. But one thing you may want to do, though, is bring the arms back. Just bring them back like this, because it may make things a little bit easier than to slide them into the sleeves. Go ahead then and take the jacket, which we got right here. It's like dressing a very small child. You're just going to feed the, the, the hands, the arms, all the way through. And you'll see the flipper hands then stick out from the sleeves. Now, the flaps of the jacket, as you'll lift up, you'll see are just solid black sleeves underneath. So you're really not getting the full overcoat sleeve. You're getting just a continuation, really, of the black inside there. Feed that all the way through, and then just bring their arms forward, and then we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, just bring this around, finding the sleeve, and then we'll go ahead and just feed that straight through. Something also you will want to be careful of, too, is knowing then where the joint is on the elbows. I know it's probably something that seems simple, but... If you don't have the arms bent the right way, you may then try to bend the arms in opposite direction of where the joint is. Like, for example, I'm just trying to get the hand here straight through. I wasn't having so much of the issue with the first one. Uh, I think it's just his thumb. Feed it all the way through. There is his hand right there. And then from there, we can just bring the arms all the way through, straighten out the arms, and then we'll go ahead and just fix up shop. Just bring down the flaps on either side fix the top of his collar. And speaking of also things that we'll want to fix too, remember we talked about the fact that the inside is actually his jacket from his suit. We're just going to bring those flaps forward. Do the exact same thing on the other side. Bring those flaps just outward like that. So at least it looks a little bit more finished, right? 
Get everything all situated and straightened out. Get his hand all straight out there. There we go. And then again, for the finishing touches, if you want to have him looking like this, again, I really love the fact that they gave us two options like this. You can go ahead and then take the, the hat, the top hat, and put that on top of his head to give him really that definitive looking mare look that he has in the movie. The only thing he's really lacking here in this department is maybe uh, an Oswald cobble pot pin that he could pin on, or maybe just even an umbrella. But I do think he looks really nice with the jacket on. I'm really not sure which way I would want to display the figure because both looks, I find, look really good. I might even just be inclined to want to pick up a second one of these so I can get those two different looks for Oswald Cobblepot. Due to the fact that I know the jacket would just get in the way of things for the figure's posability, I decided just to leave the jacket off. Looking, though, at the articulation on Penguin, his head is on a bowl joint, though it would be almost hard to believe that. The head does move only up just a little bit and only just down a little bit. Sadly, that's it. Sure, yes, you can also rotate it back and forth this way, but because the head is so so large, and because it sits so low into the cavity of the torso, it really does limit a lot of what you can do. And like I said, that's about it. That's really about it. Not really the case, though, when we look at his arms. His arms being a little bit lower down because he's got these kind of weird proportions that he has in the, in the movie. Surprisingly enough, actually, he can move his arms out quite easily on both sides. Again, you can hinge them out this way and hinge them out at a full 90 degree angle bend, which is a nice touch. You can bring the arms, of course, all the way around. Again, just the detailing done on those sleeves. I know sometimes I stop myself in the middle of these reviews and have to just stop to mention something, but the detailing that they've done on the cuffs of just the sleeves alone, really, really nice. Okay, let's go back. I'm losing my train of thought here. He does have a bend in the elbow. You can rotate also, of course, the lower arm, the arm where that plugs into the, the joint. And you can also rotate the hand all the way around. You probably also noticed too, I've already taken the liberty of changing out the hands. I think possibly in final looks, not to give you guys a tease already, may display him with the fish. I don't know, maybe. Then for his body, his body is on an upper torso ball joint. So essentially like this part is the part that moves. In case somebody was curious though, what his body looks like underneath, you can actually lift this completely up and it seems to be a finished piece underneath, almost the original outfit that he has in the movie. And also because the pants are a material and elasticized, you can actually, oh, you can actually bring his pants all the way down and giving you sort of the way that Penguin looks originally in the, well, the first release that we got, right to the point where they actually still have the zipper sculpted on the back of it. That's how he goes to the bathroom, just in case you're curious. So really, yeah, it looks like it's probably using the same body, and then they just put the clothing over top of it. While you are moving like the figure's accessories, or articulation, I should say, in the legs, then things like his pants may start shimmying their way down. At least there's an elastic on the end of it. If not for that, these pants would probably be falling down more frequently. And again, when it comes to these, you may want to have them as far up as you possibly can get them, just so they're sitting around what I'm guessing would be around Penguin's waist area. At least that's what I'm guessing is his waist area. And just bring those all the way up. Sort of just have to can keep sliding them, <laughs> sliding them up his body. There we go. To get them back to this this look right here for his legs though they do hinge out only just a little bit you can also move the legs forward and back just again a little bit he does have a bend at the knee i had noticed also when i'm bending the knee that they seem to be ratcheted one of the downsides of course again is when you are moving the knee his poor pants are going to start sliding down so you're going to have to then fix those back up and then last and certainly not least we can certainly look at his footwear which we started earlier in this review with you can see some nice sculpted in laces. And for the articulation, of course, when it comes to his feet, you can move those forward and back. Let's spin this around so you can see it. You can also ankle pivot them as well. So he does actually have quite a bit of articulation there also in his feet. For a figure of this size and stature, Penguin's got some pretty good posability. Yes, sure, it's limited when it comes to his head. That's the one place where really the figure does suffer a little bit when it comes to his posability, but like all the rest of the figure comes together really nicely. I never did get the chance to get that originally released penguin, but I'm really glad now to have the mayoral penguin and really be I, being the idea that you can dress him up or dress him down. You really have two different ways of displaying the figure, both of which are really nice renditions of Danny DeVito from my personal favorite movie, Batman movie, at least Batman Returns.
Here for the final looks of the Meryl Penguin one quarter scale action figure. I've got him displayed currently with what's left of, I'm just again assuming that that was a salmon. Somebody's probably that's a little more versed in fish. Probably is going to tell me it's something else. Maybe it's a rainbow trout. Either way, whatever fish it was, you can see what's left of it is currently in his hand. That one hand holds the fish perfectly. And actually, you know, even the defaulted stock hand that he has in the other socket can actually hold the top hat. All you really have to do is take the rim of the hat and fit it in between the pointer and the thumb, and it's fine. It holds the top hat rather nicely. Something, though, I didn't mention about the top hat. You may or may not be able to see it, but inside the hat is actually the print of the cat for Shrek's department store. I had a really nice little touch, the fact that they actually even went that far to include a detail like this. This figure has a lot of movie accurate details going for him, right down to realistic looking hair. What's left of it, at least on the back of his head. He is a nice looking figure. Things though you will want to be careful of, something I've already expressed in this review, is the, the very same top hat I was complimenting. That top hat with the black paint that they've used on the interior of the rim. I'm not really sure long term is going to start leaving settled lines across the, the head sculpt of Penguin. I've already noticed a couple of them there, and whether that was the case when that was already the figure was already out of the packaging, that that line was already there, or it could have been just there after I took the top hat off. Whatever being the case, being that his skin is a little lighter color, and the top hat being, of course, painted in black, just be careful. You know, just don't apply a lot of pressure on it. Um, again, for me, when it comes to displaying this figure, I'm not really sure how I'm going to display him in all honesty. I mean, he looks good like this. But I kind of like the idea of displaying him also with the monocle and the cigarette too. Choices, choices, decisions, decisions. Have you decided for yourself though, whether you pick this one up for yourself, which way are you going to display the figure? If you have picked up the penguin, let me know down below in the comment section, not only what you guys think of the figure, but again, how are you displaying it? I'd like to thank as well the folks who are at NECA Toys that provide the sample of Mayoral Penguin, the one quarter scale release that's currently available right now if you guys are interested in picking this one up. If you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. As well, you can also turn on the bell notification. And as well, you can keep your peepers peeled to this channel because there will be more NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.